Hi everyone, this is the fourth video in Unit 2. It's uh, all about polynomials, factoring, sketching graphs, uh, multiplicity, conjugates, all the words that we've been talking about put together in a single lesson. The problems that you'll do in class will be very similar to these. You can see here that this first function is already factored. Um, it's factored into one, two, three factors with different multiplicities x plus 1, the 0 for this, if I set this factor equal to 0, would be negative 1 with a multiplicity of 1. The second one would be a factor is x minus 2, but the 0 is 2, multiplicity of 2, a bounce, right? A cross, a bounce. And then the last one would be x, x plus 3, the 0 would be negative 3, multiplicity of 3, that one's a wiggle. So the instructions say to find the zeros and sketch a graph. And so that's basically what we've already done. Um, we have a zero, if we list the zeros here, we have one with the multiplicity of one, which is a cross. We have uh, two, which is a multiplicity of two, which is a bounce. And we have negative three with a multiplicity of three, which is a wiggle. All right, so when we go to graph this on the graph, we have 1 at negative 3, that's a w, and then we have 1 at uh, 1, I'm going to go ahead and make those there, and 2, and those are our zeros. And uh, at 1 it's a cross, and at 2 it is a bounce. The other thing we need to know is the degree of the polynomial, and usually you use the non-factored form, but it's easy to come up with one from the factored form. This is x to the first, this is x to the second, and this is x to the third. And if you add those three together, you're going to have a degree 6, which is an even. Uh, once again, a is positive, so you're going to have an up, up, rising to the left, rising to the right situation. So that tells you how you begin. So when you go to sketch, you start up, you wiggle here at negative 3, you cross at 1, and you bounce it too, and you end up back up. So you can see your end behavior and your factors are all together. That's how you put that together. Now, factoring a polynomial using its graph means that you start backwards. You start with the graph, and from the graph, you come up with the factors um, and the zeros and the end behavior, all of that together, so that you could come up with the equation of a polynomial, and that's what this screen is about. So if you go here to add your x-intercepts, where it crosses is going to be at negative 3, negative 1, 2, and 4. Right? Those are the x values where the graph crosses the x-axis. Multiplicity. At negative 3 is a cross, so that's a multiplicity of 1. At negative 1, it doesn't cross the graph, so that's a bounce, so that's going to be a multiplicity of 2. And then at 2, it is a multiplicity of 3, because it's a wiggle there. And then at 4, it is another cross, so multiplicity of 1. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to write the factors. So if the 0 is at negative 3, the factor is going to be x plus 3. If the 0 is negative 1, the factor is going to be x plus 1. And at 2 would be minus 2, and 4 would be x minus 4. Those are my factors. So to write the polynomial, we would start with f of x, because we are actually writing a function, equals, and I'm going to leave a bit of room here, but x plus 3 to the first, right? x plus 2, multiplicity of 2, x minus 2, multiplicity of 3, and x minus 4 with a multiplicity of 1. Almost finished. The last thing you look at is end behavior. We notice that as we go to negative infinity, the graph is rising. It's going to positive infinity. And as we go to positive infinity, the graph is decreasing or falling, um, going to negative infinity. So this is backwards from what it would be if it were positive. This is a negative odd behavior graph. So I'm going to have to put a negative out here for a. Now, the other thing I want to double check is, is this an odd function? Did I get the exponents right? So I count. I say there's 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven. Is it an odd degree negative leading coefficient polynomial? The answer is yes. This is one possible function for this graph. And there you go. That's how all that fits together. Please make these connections because making the connections between x-intercepts, factors, multiplicity, and end behavior will help you remember that when you have to graph it. Now, if you were going to solve these first two equations here, um, you would see that in order to solve this, you would actually get two answers. And this comes about uh, as part because it is a quadratic, and you get two zeros for each one. But if I subtract both negative 4 from both sides, and then square root both sides, I'm going to get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 4. Well, we know what the square root of 4 is. It's 2. The square root of negative 1 is i. So this is plus or minus 2i. These are complex, non-real conjugates. This particular graph is not factorable. Um, it also does not cross the x-axis. If you'll think about it, it's the graph of x squared moved up 4. There are no x-intercepts. That, that's why the zeros are imaginary. Now, if I do this next one, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I have x squared is equal to 5. Take the square root. x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 5. Square root of 5 is irrational. It's not a perfect square. So it would be a decimal, in other words. So they are real zeros, but they also come in pairs. Now, anytime a non-real or an irrational, they always come in pairs. Um, so that's not true for a real number. Like, say, for instance, if you had a bounce. So if I have uh, x plus 3 quantity squared, right, that's still just negative 3, but it has a multiplicity that means that it would actually bounce. So bounces have just a multiplicity of 2, but they bounce on, the, on there. But, so if it has a real, if it has a real uh, root then uh, that's, not, that's rational, in other words, it doesn't have a square root, then it will just come in singles. But if it has imaginary or irrational, they will always come in pairs. Did you hear the word always? Okay, so if you're looking for a degree polynomial, you would say here, this is multiplicity of 2. I'm looking for the degree. All right? This is a real 0 with a multiplicity of 3. This one, 2i, multiplicity of 1, but it comes in pairs, so you write 2. Square root of 5, multiplicity 1, they come in pairs. And they weren't written, so that's 2. So 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 equals 9. This is a 9-degree polynomial. And that's what you're asked to find. So you just have to remember that non-real and irrational always come in pairs whether they're listed there or not. All right, here it's asking, uh, it doesn't say, but it, it's asking for a possible factorization of the following polynomial. Do not multiply out the factors. All right, so looking at the end behavior, you're going to do, do this systematically. Um, if I'm looking at n behavior, I see that it does this. So I know it's going to have an even degree, and a is positive. So I already know that from the graph. Now I want to list the factors. Actually, I'm going to list the zeros and then the factors. Do you hear the difference? So I'm going to list the zeros. and their multiplicity, looking at the graph. So starting at the left, I have negative 2, and it's a bounce, right? So the 0 is at negative 2 with a multiplicity of 2. I have at negative 1 is another bounce, so it has a multiplicity of 2. At 1, it is a wiggle, so it has a multiplicity of 3. And at 2, it's a cross, so it just has a multiplicity of 1, all right? So then I write the, the equation. So I have g of x equals, don't forget that part because it is an expression. I'm leaving room for the a. The first factor is going to be x plus 2 with a multiplicity of 2. Then x plus 1 with a multiplicity of 2. 
then x minus 1 with a multiplicity of 3, and then x minus 2 with a multiplicity of 1. Because a is positive, I'm done. So don't multiply this out, but this is one possible factorization. This is a possible factorization using the graph. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about here is what this would look like in a table. You're going to see this, and you need to be thinking about what the data means in a table and translate that into what it would look like on a graph. We're still talking about the same thing. This is a polynomial that's graphed. You've hit second graph, you're looking at the table, and you have the x and y coordinates for the graph. Okay, and as you look at this, you see that I'm starting at zero, right? Right at zero, where x is zero. And as x gets more positive, I'm looking at what the y values are doing. Right? At zero, it's positive. Here it's zero, then it's negative, then it's zero, then it's positive as it's moving. Interesting. As I go to negative infinity, I see that it starts positive, stays positive, goes to zero. Then negative, then really negative, and keeps going. So my question down here is, what would a bounce look like in a table? What does a zero look like in a table? What is a zero? If you, if you, you know, do a quick graph and you say three zero, one, two, three zero, guess what you found? This is an x-intercept, right? This is a zero. Um, this is a zero. This is a zero. So on this table, I have found three zeros. Now, another thing to look like on a zero is what's happening to the y values on either side. At 3, 0, at 4, it's 18. It's up here. And at 2, it's negative 4, down here. So what happens for the 0? Well, this 0 is either going to be a cross or a wiggle. Can't tell. Can't tell from the, from the data in the table which one that is. I know for sure it's not a bounce. Why do I know for sure it's not a bounce? Yeah because you have a sign change there. Remember the um, intermediate, intermediate value theorem? That's what that says. That says there's a zero located somewhere between where x is 2 and x is 0. And the reason I know that is because there is a sign change between from 0 to 2 on the x. So the IVT tells me that there has to be a zero located here. Once again, from 2 to 4, there has to be a 0. How do I know? Because it is negative 4 to 18. Now, this is kind of theory, but what that's saying is if it goes from negative to positive, right, that there's a 0. But when we say negative to positive, aren't we talking a cross or a wiggle? But not a bounce, okay? So what does a bounce look like in a table? Well, a bounce is going to look like um, it's going to be like here, if this is not a bounce, this is a cross or a wiggle, but a bounce would be the same y sign on either side. Do you see? Because it would come down, it'd be positive, it goes to zero, stays positive. It's negative, goes to zero, stays negative. That's what a bounce looks like. So there's a lot you can tell from this table. Um, I could also write a factored form of this because I know what the zeros are. Right, so I know that this is um, f of x, leave room for a sign, not sure about that yet, um, but I would say x minus 3, not sure whether that's to the first or the third, can't tell from a table, uh, x minus 1, same there, and x plus 2. Now, as just looking at this table, it looks like down here at negative 4 it's down, and it looks like here that it's up, so this is positive. But I'd like more data before I saw that, because there could be more zeros. But just looking at this table, this is a possible factorization. This is a huge concept, and being able to read a table, look at a table, and see what it's doing is really important. Um, oh, and the other thing that I didn't mention, and I'll change colors here, what is this point? Zero, six. Zero in the y-coordinate 
was a zero. Zero in the x-coordinate is not an x-intercept, but a y. This is a y-intercept. So you can tell a lot from a table. Okay, you're going to get a lot of these problems. And these problems say factor the following polynomial functions completely. Back in the old days, before we had calculators, uh, to do something like this would be really difficult because you would have to list all the possible factors that could be on here. And then you would just have to keep doing long division or synthetic division or some kind of division until you find an actual factor or something that will divide evenly without a remainder. And it was long and it was laborious. And say, for instance, uh, you would take the, uh, all the factors of the final constant divided by all the factors of A, right? And then you would list all of those out and you would try them. Okay, what we do now, and that's Descartes' rule of signs and rational root theorem. I mean, there's all kinds of theorems that we use to do that. Um, there's, no, there's no, in my mind, no reason to do that now. Some mathematicians would vehemently di disagree with me about this, but put it in your calculator and get as many real roots as you can possibly get. That's what I did. And I found real roots using my table uh, at negative 3 and 4. And then I used those then to divide and make my polynomials simpler. If I divide it by two factors, something that starts out to the fourth power is going to end up something squared. And I can either factor it or do quadratic formula or something to find the rest of the factors. So that's what I'm going to do here. I've written out, and hopefully that's what you've been doing, writing out the, the coefficients. Um, this is the, the x-intercept, not the factor, so negative 3. And then I'm going to do the um, just synthetic division here. And there are some teachers who don't want their students to do this one either, the synthetic. Um, but in this case, I think it's the best. So definitely this verifies it is a factor, no remainder. All right, so then the second one was uh, the 4. So I'm just going to leave it like that and put the 4 here and divide this out. So if I were writing out this factor here, this would be now to x to the third. This was x to the fourth. I divided out one. This is x to the third. The next one will be x squared. So as I write this, let's see, I've got to uh, bring down the 6, 24, add them together, negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Add those together, you get negative 2. This is negative 8. And once again, 0. That's also a factor. So I now have um, 6x squared minus x minus 2. Uh, I'm not sure if that factors or not, so let me do this really quick. 3 and 4, negative 6, 6. So uh, this is 1 half, and this is negative 2 thirds. So this is negative, well, I can tell you right now, it's hard for, to see this, but the final two factors are going to be negative one-half, and what was that, negative two-thirds? So then it would be two-thirds. Because it's always going to be, you know, if you do the x method, it's always going to be the opposite sign of the two things that you have here to write the factors. Because if you have, uh, let's see, this is uh, 2x plus 1. Oh, I can't write. It's almost not enough room. 2x plus 1 and... Um, 3x minus 2, right? And so when I do that, that's the factors I get. So the four factors for this are negative 3, 4, negative 1 half, and 2 thirds. So get these original from the calculator and then keep dividing out until you get to something you can factor or use quadratic formula or something like that. Um, that will be your best bet. All right, one more thing, one more um, continuing on these concepts of conjugates and factors. We're still writing functions in factored form that have the following zeros. Okay, and the thing you have to remember and that is unspoken is that some zeros always come in pairs. So remember, when you have the quadratic formula 
right? This plus or minus means that there are two roots. So if it is not real, has an I in it, or irrational, a square root, then they're going to come in pairs. So here, this one does not come in a pair because it's just a real root. That's a real root. But this is imaginary. It has a conjugate, always, always, always. And its conjugate is negative 2i. Remember to find, you know, we did this before in an earlier thing, found the conjugate. The conjugate for this is negative square root of 3 because these would be found on this side of the plus or minus sign. So it's the middle sign. So if you're going to write um, factors here, I would have x plus 2, those are the easy ones, x minus 3, right? And then I would have um, x plus 2i, x minus 2i, and then I would also have x plus square root of 3, and x minus square root of 3. Now, one other thing, because that's awesome and you can write it like that, but if you'll remember, this is actually x squared plus 4. Right? We did that earlier. And this one is going to be x squared minus 3. So instead, you could write it finally, f of x is equal to x plus 2, x minus 3, x squared plus 4, and x squared minus 3, and you're done. So there's a lot in here. I hope that you will read through this. Um, I'm going to... I'm hoping that as you're writing down these notes, you are also thinking about these concepts, and when you go to do your assignment, then you can come back and find the example that we did before. Um, you can also find this information in your textbook. It's all in there. Um, there are also some sites online if you need more information. And then be prepared to ask questions on anything you didn't understand from this lesson. I think this is a good reminder. We've been watching videos for a while, and I don't want you to become complacent or to think just copying this down in your composition notebook is enough, because it's really not. See you all in class.